Hi there. Yes, another video about the popular 5-digit frequency counter kit based on a pic 16 f 628 a you can cheaply get on eBay and places like Banggood. If you follow my channel, you know that in the past I modified the firmware for this kit a few times. It now provides higher resolution for frequencies and it can also be used to count RPM using 1, 2, 3 or 4 pulses per revolution. But recently a viewer asked me if the counter can be changed to just count. He wants to use it to count the number of turns when wiring transformer coils and the like. Well, as you see, it can be done. Moreover, this is just another mode, so the same firmware can be used to measure frequency, RPM or just count events like turns. The updated firmware as a sampler source or hex file ready for loading into the chip can be downloaded from my github page, links in the description in this video. If you press the button while turning the kit on, it cycles through the modes. Frequency, the 4 RPM modes and now count. You just let go when the desired mode is shown. It remembers your choice in the EEPOM and will default to this at the next power up. In count mode, pressing the button resets the counter. Counting at one pulse per second. Ten pulses per second. One hundred pulses per second. My goal was to make this work within the framework of the existing code and not to create a separate firmware. I have explained how the firmware works in more detail in previous videos on the frequency counter, so this is just a high level overview. This picture here is how the original frequency measurement works. Things have changed a bit since, for example this offset stuff here is gone and basically replaced by the RPM calculations, but it helps to illustrate the key points. The core measurement is done in this orangey colored subroutine here called count pulses. The assembler code in this bracket marked by the black arrow is rather tricky because it is coded in such a way that one pass of the length of the arrow takes exactly 100 machine instructions or 400 clock cycles which take exactly 20 microseconds using a 20 megahertz clock. To measure Hertz, the count pulses routine is set up to loop 50,000 times, which takes exactly one second. The actual counting is done by hardware timer 0, which is just an 8-bit counter with programmable prescaler. We can measure megahertz with an 8-bit counter because of the prescaler at high frequencies and because count pulses will read the timer at least every 20 microseconds so the software can take care of overflows. The basic program flow on the left shows that after displaying the frequency we go back to auto ranging where we basically do a quick and coarse frequency measurement using a very short gate time to get a rough idea of the current frequency and then if necessary change the prescaler and gate time to provide the best resolution. This diagram shows on a high level how this basic flow is changed when the new counter mode is selected. The first thing to notice is that once we are past the initial setup and auto ranging, which is of course meaningless but also harmless in counter mode, we never go back to that code. Instead, the gate time is fixed to one tenth of a second or 5000 loops. The only change in the count pulses routine is to precede the reset of timer 0 by looking for timer 0 changes. This is rather crucial because in frequency or RPM mode we only measure pulses that occur inside the orangey part and ignore what happens once the software exits from there. So each measurement starts with a clean slate and reset timer 0 as the first thing. In counter mode we can't do that because pulses may have arrived when we were busy outside the orange part, for example, for matting the display buffer. I call that the dark time because we have no idea what happened to timer zero outside count pulses. I explain how to deal with this in a moment. The other changes are quite simple. 
When count pulses returns, it presents us with the number of pulses that were counted since the last call. So we simply accumulate these in memory and display them. As the last action, the button is checked to allow the counter to be reset to zero without having to go through a power cycle. It also resets when the counter goes beyond 99,999. The reason for that is at 100,000 and beyond, the auto-ranging display routine would otherwise shift the display to the right to allow to show only the highest parts of the number. For a counter, this would be very confusing, especially if you miss the overflow and now you're wondering why the counter seems to be frozen and increments only occasionally. You would be seeing the 10th dig digit as the most right one and the 1's digit is incrementing as it should, but no longer displayed. Let's look at the problem of dark time a bit closer. Consider case 1. At the end of count pulses, timer 0 has some value, in this case 1 to 3. When we leave the routine and do other housekeeping things, sometimes later, the dark time, we re-enter the count pulses and look at timer 0 again and find it's now 145. This means timer 0 counted 22 additional pulses while we were not looking and so we need to start this count pulses loop with a start value of 22. In case 2, the setup is the same, but when we come back, we find the counter is now 45. This means timer 0 has overflowed and wrapped around while we were not looking. The new start value is therefore 256 minus 1 to 3 or 133 pulses till timer 0 wrapped around to 0 and then 45 pulses or 178 pulses in total. While this takes care of things, there's one big potential issue. We can only detect and fix one overflow that way. If the pulses come so fast or the dark time is so long that timer zero overflows more than once during the dark time, we have no way of detecting it. So the maximum speed the counter can count correctly is such that at most 255 pulses appear in the dark time period. The question therefore is, how long is the dark time? Luckily, it's relatively easy to find out with an oscilloscope. For that, we need a brief tour of the way the display is driven. This is again a simplification. Basically, the seven segments and the decimal point are all wired in parallel and driven by eight output ports from the microcontroller. The common cathode of the five displays are each separately driven from the PIC. I gloss over the ingenious way one transistor and three diodes create a fifth driver signal from four I.O. lines. The software puts the pattern for one display out on the eight segment lines and then pulls the corresponding cathode line low for 1.28 milliseconds. This time is derived from 64 loops and as we know each loop takes 20 microseconds. The low signal makes the display light up and showing the number based on the pattern on the segment lines. After 64 loops, the software raises the cathode signal again, puts out the signal for the next display and pulls the cathode signal for that one down and so on in a continuous cycle. This multiplexing goes so fast that the eye does not see that only one display at a time is illuminated. The refresh speed of the whole display is almost 140 times per second. The point of all this is, if you just examine one of the cathode lines, no matter which, you see a pulse looking like this. Of course, the colors are just for illustration and represent the time when one of the other four displays is active. The gap between the pulses is exactly 4 times 1.28 milliseconds or 5.12 milliseconds. Now, during the dark time, the display is not multiplexed, so the gap is longer and we can get an idea about how long that time is. For that measurement, I just hook a scope probe to any of the display cathode lines. The signal looks like this, 
I amplified this to cover the whole screen because you can actually see the effect of the four other displays multiplexing by a slight modulation of the high signal. This is similar to the four colors used in the diagram earlier. If I now switch the scope's built-in function on to measure the gap time and use the statistics function to get maximum and minimum values, you can see that the minimum is the expected 5.12 milliseconds and the maximum about 5.39 milliseconds. Updated with these measurements, the picture looks like this. We have the expected gaps of 5.12 milliseconds and then a larger one of 5.39 milliseconds, which is 0.27 milliseconds longer. Now to be fair, the dark time could be as short as 0.27 milliseconds, but it could also be longer because we don't know how much of that 5.39 milliseconds is caused by dark time and how much of it is part of the regular multiplexing because we leave count pulses in the middle of a multiplexing cycle. As an unlikely but worst case, we should assume a dark time of 5.39 milliseconds, which means an undetectable wraparound would occur if pulses come faster than 47.5 kHz. That's still more than plenty and will overflow the five digits of the counter after just two seconds. So much for the extreme case, but how to make sure the counter works as it should even at lower speeds? We can feed it with, for example, a 10Hz signal and use a stopwatch or a countdown timer like this one. To get the best accuracy, I press the reset when the countdown timer reaches the 10 minute mark. And we expect to see the value to be 6000 when the stopwatch reaches 0. which it does, taking into account the uncertainty of me pressing reset at the right moment. Clearly this method isn't the most accurate one, especially for faster events. Luckily my FY6600 function generator, which I use for the 10Hz signal, has a few more tricks in its sleeve, so to say. Here is the kit hooked up to channel 1 of the FY6600 running at 10Hz, but I connect the same feed to the FY6600 input as well. The measure function of the FY6600 can be set to count events too. I slightly pulled out the BNC T connector from the output so both counters stop. The FY6600 is already zeroed so let's do the same for the kit. By pushing the BNC connector back in both counters start simultaneously. Both are busy counting up they look pretty much in sync. To be sure, I decide to pull the BNC connector back out to stop both counters as close as I can at the same moment. Both show exactly the same value, 815, so no problems at 10 Hz. Can we go faster? Let's change the frequency of channel 1 from 10 Hz to 100 Hz. The BNC connector is still slightly pulled out. Switching to measurement mode, which shows already a count of zero, and resetting the kit. Pushing the BNC connector back in to start both counters. Both are counting up. Pulling the BNC connector back out to stop them. 5021 on both at 100 Hz. Well, what about 1000 Hz? It's the same routine, changing the frequency from 100 to 1000 Hz. Switching to measurement mode, the kit needs to be reset manually. Pushing the BNC connector back in, both are counting up furiously. Pulling the BNC connector back to stop them. 
well 30,683 on the PIC and 30,684 on the FY6600. So we lost one count on the PIC. There could be many reasons for that. For example, if one was counting a rising edge and the other one falling edges. So I'm not really bothered about that. I discovered one other neat way you can test counters with the FY6600. Burst mode. You can trigger bursts manually or from external, but I'm lazy and use channel 2, which I'm setting to 0.5 Hz, that is one burst every two seconds, and positive square wave. Channel 1 is still set to 1000 Hz from before. In the modulation menu, I'm selecting burst. The source is set by default to channel 2 and I'm setting the number of pulses in a burst to 20. After resetting the kit, you can see the result. Every two seconds, the counter increases by 20 because it gets a burst of 20 events with each event being a pulse of half a millisecond duration because of the selected 1 kHz frequency in channel 1 which determines the pulse width. It's a neat way of verifying that the counter can count short pulses accurately. Let's change the number of pulses per burst to 100 and reset the kit. Now the counter is going up in steps of 100 every 2 seconds. Five hundred pulses per burst. Well, that concludes this video on upgrading and testing the firmware of this little counter to allow it to count events in addition to measure frequency and RPM. Leave comments and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching.